Hello viewers, welcome to program State Affairs with Osama Khurshid. Viewers, spare me because of my throat. I'm not feeling good today. Well, we'll talk about the changing dynamics of Afghanistan today. On one side, Pakistan is fencing the Afghanistan-Pakistan border, whereas Afghanistan situation is faltering and fumbling because Kabul witnessed deadly blast in last month in which more than 95% died and hundreds got injured. Viewers, let me take you into the past decade. The US invaded Afghanistan back in 2001 when they accused Al-Qaeda of bombing the Twin Towers of New York. Though the tension started between the United States and the de facto head of state of Afghanistan, Mullah Umar, after the destruction of the Buddhas of Bamiyan. Pakistan as neighboring countries was one of much importance in that regard. As expected, Pakistan played a very vital role in assisting International Security Assistance Force, as known as ISAF, in killing and capturing the top command of Al-Qaeda. It's been now 17 years the United States invaded Afghanistan. Yet, in holistic view, the situation is grimmer. The United States has spent some $700 billion on military operations and reconstruction projects in Afghanistan. Yet, it is one of the poorest countries in the world. The social fabric has been deformed as 10 million people live under the poverty line and only 25% of the population is literate. Viewers, let me tell you that Afghanistan has lost more than 31,000 Afghan civilians after the invasion. The number of internally displaced people has exceeded 1.2 million. In last 17 years, various regional countries have been involved in carrying out a proxy war in Afghanistan. Pakistan arch rival India's external intelligence agency, RAW, has been supporting TTP, Jamaat ul Ahrar, and Balochistan subnationalist outfits to carry out terror attacks in Pakistan. Now, the matter of the fact is that Afghanistan has become a safe haven for numerous terrorists who are using Afghan soil against Pakistan. In these contours, last year Pakistan has decided to fence the border after a little skirmish between the Afghan and Pakistani forces. The first phase of the project is likely to be completed by the end of 2018 which will see the fencing of 432 kilometers at the most critical points along the border. Audience, Pakistan army has broken the myth that this border is so perilous that it cannot be fenced. United States of America opposed the decision, but Pakistan army took this decision and started fencing the border. This is the project of strategic significance for Pakistan and stable Afghanistan. The stability in Afghanistan would be key in promoting regional integration and trade for carrying out the energy projects across boundaries. The instability in Afghanistan would jeopardize regional energy projects, affect trade on different routes, and even Kabul won't get multiple benefits from China-Pakistan economic corridor. Viewers, concrete efforts are needed to keep stability in Afghanistan as continued violence had dropped the region of immense economic opportunities. Pakistan would benefit the most if there were stability and calm in Afghanistan, and in the same way, it would suffer the most if conflict continued in the country. Now, that would be very surprising for you, but let me tell you that India had poured investment of $2 billion in various projects in Afghanistan, which increased its influence in the country, but Pakistan, has not done that much. Pakistan needs to set the soft power elements in Afghanistan society. And as the Afghanistan perspective, Afghanistan wanted that it should be treated as a sovereign country, which decided on its own and what kind of relation it would want with other nations. Well, they're absolutely fine about asking the sovereign status. But for the sovereign status, let me tell you that the state must have one nation and one identity. The fact of the matter is that the component of nation building is missing from Afghan as a whole nation. The segments are overwhelmed with the influence of neighboring countries. There are pro-Iran lobby, pro-Indian lobby, pro-Pakistan lobby, 
whereas there are segments who wants the permanent stay of United States of America and Afghanistan. When Afghans have this sense of nation building, then they must ask about the sovereignty because then they will have the stability, they will have the clear policy, there will be no fragmentation in the society and the decision would have a say as a nation. The sense of ownership to Afghans for their country will also harness the joint efforts for regional stability. But on the other part of Afghanistan, Kabul should eliminate the rogue elements within the security apparatus in order to ensure that Afghanistan does not remain a sanctuary for terror outfits. This approach will also help Kabul in improving its relation with neighboring countries such as Pakistan, Iran and India and will ensure the regional countries do not use Afghan soil for their proxy war. Now let's conclude the topic. The quadrilateral coordination group framework proved to be a success in the past and therefore it should be revived so that a solution could be reached for resolving the crisis faced by Afghanistan. Delaying tactics regarding negotiations will not help anyone but will further add misery to the lives of Afghan people who have remained in the turmoil for more than three decades. Viewers and last, let's focus on the international arena. On recent attack in Afghanistan, whose responsibility being claimed by the Afghan Taliban, Trump tweeted that we will not allow the Taliban to win. So Mr. Trump, I have a very simple question from the President of the United States of America. That which win you are talking about? It's almost 17 years and US-NATO alliance has only managed to secure less than 60% of Afghanistan? Well, according to the latest stats, the government could only claim to control or influence 57% of Afghanistan, which is totally 407 districts. More than 10% of the districts are under insurgent control or influence, while 33% are contested. Whoa, 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 like seriously. This is travesty. Let's get on the ground reality. Let me tell you that more than 50% of the area is controlled by the Taliban in Afghanistan. Well, I don't want to be cynic, but how can you justify the 17 years of war in a third world country who don't have the technology, military supremacy and strong economy? Here I want to address the President of the United States of America. Mr. Donald J. Trump and even the future president of the United States of America, whoever he will be, that if you want stability in Afghanistan, make the balance between the government and Taliban. Create the balance of power between the northern and southern people. There's a majority of Pashtun Afghans. On the other hand, there are Tajiks, Kurds and Uzbeks. Please create a cohesive environment between them. Be the president of the strongest state of the world and stop acting like a sheriff of any area. Generate the mutual stakes between the different fragments of the society. If you think you can stabilize Afghanistan without these things, then I'm sorry, you are living in a dream world. If international powers are serious to resolve the Afghanistan issue, they must generate the stakes of neighboring states in Afghanistan. And the advantages should be relative rather than absolute. That's all for today, viewers. Take care of yourself and your national affairs. Take care. Goodbye.